Last week we talked about lead acid batteries, wet cells, AGMs, gel batteries. We talked about the acid and the dangers of that and the dangers of the gases. This week we're going to talk about lithium batteries, the different types that there are, and ask the right questions. Are we all going to Valhalla in our lithium powered sailboats? Or is there something else at play here? Or is it just, you know, hoo-ha? Stay with us. We'll tell you what we think. believe the blaze was caused by a faulty lithium iron battery from an e-bike. Uh, it happened pretty quickly on that side. Possibly a lithium iron battery has been charged in that room which has escalated that situation. I think it's pretty safe to say that we're all aware that lithium iron batteries can be dangerous and that they do catch fire. And this tends to happen during charging or sometimes through heavy discharge. So are lithium batteries really as dangerous as everybody makes out? Well the sheep, the armchair sailors and those who have a vested interest in selling lead acid batteries will all tell you that lithium is intrinsically dangerous and it shouldn't be on a boat. They don't tell you is what type of lithium and there's plenty of different sorts. And the type we use on boats is Life PO4, not lithium iron which is what's used in vehicles and scooters and bikes, etc. Let's look at lithium iron. Used in phones, drones and action cameras, lithium iron has a very good power to weight ratio. These batteries are really best suited to traction or motion batteries. They can discharge huge bursts of energy very quickly and can be charged very quickly too. Best used for scooters, cars, golf carts, etc. They need careful installation and charging. Lithium iron and lithium metal cells are known to undergo a process called thermal runaway during failure conditions. Thermal runaway results in rapid increase of battery cell temperature and pressure, accompanied by the release of flammable gas. The gases include oxygen, as part of the process and therefore lithium fires are extremely difficult to put out. They will continue to burn underwater. Foam, dry powder and even CO2 extinguishers will not put out a lithium fire. Like an explosive such as gunpowder they will continue to burn making their own gases and oxygen until the fuel runs out. Thermal runaway can be caused by piercing or damaging a cell, overcharging, overusing, discharging, or damage caused in transit. The heat caused in the thermal runaway compromises the adjacent cell, causing a chain reaction in the power pack. It is this type of battery that has initially given lithium boats a bad name. This type of lithium can be discharged to very low states of charge, SOC, as low as 3 or 4%, and largely without, allegedly, shortening its life. It can also be charged rapidly. Some manufacturers claim their batteries will last 10 years and 6,000 plus cycles, and while this may be true with careful use and in ideal charging conditions and discharging rates of course the reality is the harder these batteries are used the shorter their lifespan and the less stable and reliable they become they are up to 60 percent lighter in weight than most wet or lead acid batteries and it's this reason that they tend to be used for motion Uh, 
Now that's the inside of the scooter. I've had to take it apart to get these two wires here, which are the brake light and running light. Actually, a little clip. And the clip goes in there, look. And it's, I've got it in the pair of pliers there. And they're the two tabs from the inside. And I'm going to have to... Uh, try and undo them or solder them back in and then put them back into here a tricky job I'll tell you about a bit about the scooters As someone was asking the other day hello you've got a flashing light in there look I wonder what that means so the electric scooters we have are the show me MI electric scooter they have 600 watts in the brushless motor. They're good for 25k. They fold up fairly easily um, and they'll store in our back cabin. However, we don't charge them in there. We charge them uh, out on deck or uh, actually on a pontoon. Easy enough to do. Um, got these battery packs inside and there's an external charger. Uh, it's not inside the scooter. And they take about four and a half to five hours to charge from empty. And yes, they are lithium iron. So why have I included the scooter in this video? Well, a recent marine industry conference on the use of lithium batteries actually agreed that it wasn't the domestic or house batteries that were a problem, but the spate of recent fires aboard super yachts have mainly been caused by their toys, you know, wakeboards, submersibles, powered scooters, bicycles, etc. and usually while they were on charge. So let's talk about Life PO4. Life PO4 has the edge over lithium iron, both in terms of cycle life, it lasts four to five times longer, and safety. The key advantage, obviously, is that lithium ion batteries can overheat thermal runaway and even catch fire, while Life PO4 does not. Life PO4 is the battery that we should be using on vessels, and preferably one that has a self contained battery management system within the battery. These are what we call direct change or drop in batteries, and you'll see them on most of the sailing channels. A battery management system, or BMS, is a type of lithium battery control system that monitors, controls and protects the state of charge of the battery pack. This includes charging and discharging. Lithium batteries also have to have their cells equalised as they're charged to reach their long-term potential. Therefore, an active equalisation BMS that balances all the cells when charging is preferable. Not all BMS systems have this, but the better systems do. Some BMS systems allow the monitoring system, like our Raspberry Pi, to take control of the BMS via Bluetooth. However, unless you have detailed knowledge of the system and how the battery actually works, it's not recommended that you fiddle with settings. Indeed, some of the manufacturers lock critical components of the settings to prevent such tampering. Keeping to the manufacturer's recommended parameters with most of these types of batteries in marine use, you can discharge them down to around 10%, with no shortening of the lifespan, allegedly. Some manufacturers are now quoting 10 years and guaranteeing their batteries up to 5 years or more. Life PO4 batteries can also be charged at a much higher rate and faster than lead-acid batteries. If we look at the typical 100 to 200 amp hour lithium life PO4 battery, it is likely to have a maximum discharge rate of around 100 to 200 amp hours and a maximum charge rate of a similar value. This is set by the BMS, but many newer batteries with BMS control can have even higher charge and discharge rates. When fitted in parallel, these values are accumulative. For example, if we took four 100 amp hour life PO4 batteries rated at 200 amps discharge 
and 100 amp recharge rates, the combined output would be 800 amp hours discharge and 400 recharge. Life PO4 certainly has the edge on charge and discharge rates compared to all other batteries. It can also be as little as 30% of the weight of a wet cell. And mounting can be either vertical or horizontal. You can even lay them on their side. Fitted in the right way, Life PO4 are, in my opinion, much safer than wet cells and outperform all lead acid batteries. The cost of lithium batteries as drop-in replacements is falling all the time. However, there are a few anomalies, shall we say, about charging and differing opinions. Perhaps if enough of you are interested, we'll do another video on charging lithium and what we think is the best way to do it. Meanwhile, I'd like to thank you for watching and if you've enjoyed this video and you've got something from it, and the last one, then please like and subscribe. It costs you nothing to do so. Now if you'd like us to do another video on charging of lithium, then tell us in the comments. It costs you nothing to leave a comment, and we do read every single one. Don't forget, all the links that I've talked about are down in the description. Or you can find them on our website, www.svmpavidus.com or you can simply use your smartphone to take a photograph of this QR code and it will take you straight to our website. How easy is that? Now, don't forget, sail safe guys. See you next time.